So the next step could be um, the main big part is what. Oh dear, I, can't. I cannot type today. What is the player experience? And this is again the second. Well, this is very important because part of the player experience is, you know, why. These are some questions. Why should they play? You might not be able to answer them straight away, but why should they play your game? Why should they be bothered? You know, how are you going to engage with the player? And what engage with the player? That's that's a very important question, and so I'll elaborate on that a tiny bit more. So engage with the player. Um, a player gets engaged when they find the game challenging. If the game's not challenging, then they're not really going to bother or want to do the the hard bit at the beginning, then they're going to stop playing. So, um, pretty much the three things you need to, to take into consideration is challenge. How are they challenged? Um, mastery. How are they mastering the game? So this is pretty much just how do they get good at the game? Um, yeah, it's how how do they get good at the game? Um, let's think of, of an example. Um, let's say with like yeah, Call of Duty, you get good at the game, or you know that you get good at the game because you level up. And level up unlocks more weapons and more weapons unlocks more perks and unlocking those wep more weapons and more perks means that you will have a bigger advantage of other players that are a lower ranker than you so that is the mastery of Call of Duty for example but just these two or when the player masters the game this is the point when they get bored because there's nothing else it to um there's nothing else that well let's have a look challenge mastery i'll get to that what i'm just going to say after about them getting bored um they need to know that they're getting good at, at the game so they need to be rewarded um So again, let's say Call of Duty. I know with like Modern Warfare 2, you'd have to unlock your skins, like your camouflages, and then you'd also unlock the um, dog dog tags and name tags. Um, that would be a reward of saying like, you know, we know you, you we know you're a pro. So here's like, you know, an item or what have you to say like, you know, we acknowledge you. That's why achievements are like a very big thing amongst games because it's rewarding the player so as I was saying about getting bored is if they get to this stage then once they've achieved everything or they feel like they've mastered it and they've been rewarded it get the dopamine hit then they're not going to play anymore so you have to think well how am I going to increase the challenge of the game and you could just make it like um you know, how would you do it? Make it harder. That's like the typical sort of t typical sort of um, thing that people do. It's not necessarily the best way, but you could do make it harder. But again, if you just make it harder, then the pl player might think, oh, well, I'm just doing the same thing. But it's just harder, so you have to 
do like juice new features mechanics or change the full set so change just like either completely or slightly change how the game is being made oh hi um plug six Oh, let's just let's just have a look at the um the URL that I've put in then. Um I'll I'll give you the copy if you want uh let's have a look. Copy link. Um, do you have any suggestions? Um, so, as I was saying with the reward anyway, so your reward of the player experience. Um, you know, how do they do get, getting good? Um, new items achievements Um, so reward, so achievements. So this is sort of like the generic way of how games, how games get the player to um, feel engaged. Um, but we need to sort of think of a way how to make the player feel engaged with our game. So let's see. Let's see for the um the reward for our game. So it could be like unlocking new modules for the tank. So this could just be like I don't know like Larger fuel tanks. Okay, <laughs> I, I can talk. I'm, I'm not very good at talking um, publicly, but it's just I'm it's I'm just trying to force myself to do it. Um, something I just need to get a bit better at. Um, so unlocking new modules for the tanks that could be like larger. Fuel tank, um, better armor, but the, these these again can be like very like very like rubbish upgrades. I'm not saying like we can't have it in our game. Oh, I don't like the I don't like if I was doing that. Um, Um, doesn't mean we can 
can't have it in our game, but it'll be good if, like, the new m modules actually add new features to the game or small, um, small, like, you know, gameplay functions such as I don't know when you press a button it disables all tanks within an area or siphons petrol from other tanks or you can I don't know I'd make it sound a bit funny so said juices more than one tank at a time so these are just a few ideas of just like how you reward the player just make it a bit better than just just increasing just the properties saying like oh you, you can only go from 50 liters to 70 liters that's really boring but if the player knows that more features are going to be added and more fun gameplay effects can be added then that'll be a lot better um so is this fiverr work or work for yourself um i i work in i don't know whether you just seen i've been trying to update my youtube channel anyway but um I'm trying to, from my website, I'm trying to promote my Fiverr stuff just because I do tutoring. And it's mainly how to use um, Unreal Engine rather than to do um, game design documents. But um, for my job, I do virtual reality training for an online um from an online company, for a um, yeah, company. So we've been working on like how to improve safety and how to show um, proper procedures when entering a wind turbine. Or how to use a um a lifeboat properly, so they're the sort of things that we we do. So I've I've been doing it since December um December last year and really enjoying it. Um, not sure, but if you check my YouTube channel, if you see the um one of the videos decided, which is um something about a gantry crane, interactive gantry crane, um. This is what we are uh, currently doing at work. So it's quite difficult actually trying to get like the Fiverr stuff, um, Fiverr stuff, um, multiplayer features working on the Oculus Quest. Um, reward. So we've got the reward working. Um, how do we master? How are they mastering the game? Um, so this is when we can actually start adding like you know points that are happening or um you know let's say like how do they know they're getting good at the game um the amount of other robots could be going down um or more of the robots of each generation has your you know lineage so but if that's happening then that's how we make it challenging so like if so we can go like if this happens see challenges so like challenges make it harder so like but again that's really broad introduce new features so make it harder what one we could make it harder um cheers man what do you think is interesting is <laughs> it's it's a struggle trying to get networking in vr work you know just networking in general don't think people really understand um and i definitely didn't the amount of work that i had to go into it 
and you have to sort of make sure your games are set up for networking from the start because the longer you leave it then the lo the harder it is just trying to get everything to work so we're just going through that now we've done a previous project working on a winter well like i said a wind turbine and that was single player and we added a lot of features to it and then we tried to bring it over to our new project and just n nothing worked um so, like, I think our hand animations, we used to have it working where we can see other people open and close their hands, but because we improved how that, you know, and rather than it being, like, hands open or hands closed, we've now added um, more unique hand animations, so that just doesn't get carried over at all. So, yeah, there's a lot of challenges doing it, but it is really fun. Um, like, we added um, a camera feature. So, rather than just taking a screenshot of the screen, of the um of what's you know of the player's perspective we actually added like a polaroid camera um so you'd be able to see what's happening from essentially the camera's point of view rather than the players and then put that image onto like a smart board so other people can see it so we haven't got that networked just yet but we're in the process of doing it so it is quite fun um so challenge so one of the things is like if the hectic versary goes down like the player is taking over then we could like Let's see. Then the game can introduce random events that will increase the increase diversification. So just like what's happening in the real world with, I believe it's um, bananas. Which you might not know, but like the main strain of bananas called Cavendish bananas um, are being um, affected by the, a disease, but other varieties of bananas doesn't. So we could like intro, you know, introduce viruses that like to attack. Uh, Let's say F effect robot with a particular trait like I don't know like has large fuel tanks. I don't know. Um introduce viruses that thing. Um And you can be like, when these viruses occur, the player then has to adapt and figure out what the virus is, what Because the virus is attacking and, you know, um, move way of being reliant feature. It's really hard to sort of format your ideas when you're just creating them. But that's why I sort of like tabbing or just using bullet points. But I'll probably go through here and just make it a bit neater. Um, we haven't gone back to cha uh, challenges. Mastery, reward. Right. So this is one. 
why should the player, how are you going to engage the player? So all this is the... And I am actually using a um, a document I was given to me by my university professor. Um, let's have a look. Adobe Acrobat. Let's see. But this is why his stuff is really, really, what he taught was really, really interesting and super helpful. Um. He's called Dr. Carlo Fabricatore, and he's got a, a lot of um, research papers about like these just game design, game design um just problems in game design and how to like apply it to teaching and lots of other things. Um, let's see, say coffee to clipboard. Paste this image in here. Should I can make it a bit bigger? There's no point making it small. So as you can see, it is like a, a cycle. And when this cycle breaks, that is when the player is going to stop stop playing the game. Um let's have a look. We also need to make sure that, well, one feature is like, so rather than just what's happening in the game, what you need to take into consideration as well is um, the players think think, feel, do cycle, which is going to be this image I'm going to post in a second. So think, feel, do. So what this pretty much is, is that, well, you have the feel, which is their emotion. The think is what the, what are, what's the player's thought processes of, for example, like maybe in Command and Conquer, the thinking, am I going to build this building, which is going to help me increase my resource production, or am I going to um, build this soldier that is going to help me defend my resources so the more the player is thinking and feeling then that increases engagement in their head rather than so and that's how sort of like how games like chess it can be engaging for people is because they're really heavily thinking and feeling maybe a bit of anger i don't really know or maybe like with chess, they're thinking a lot on games like Stardew Valley and very like slow slow games, they might be thinking a lot, but they'll be feeling like you know, they're just getting enjoyment from the game. Um, but they still might not be doing much. But then games like um say League of Legends or I don't know, StarCraft, they'll be thinking and doing a lot because they have like really high actions per minute. And I'm not really gonna go much into this think feel do. 